the concept of leadership is very related to decision making. And we also have the ideal person to talk about chess and leadership, Ashwin Sabramarian. Uh, as I said before about Filip Bukojevic, Ashwin is combining two passions. He is a high technology leader in India and a very big chess lover as well. Most likely, <clears throat> you are going to be very surprised about how strong are the connections between chess and leadership. The title of his presentation is Play Chess, Become a Leader. Ashwin, please, welcome to the Educational Chess Summit 2022. Thank you. Thank you. I'm super excited and honored to be here for the fifth time at the Global Chess Festival to talk about you know, how playing chess can help you become a leader. The objective of my presentation is to share learnings from leadership skills that I have developed through playing chess and inspire action. I'll start with a brief introduction to my own chess and career journey. I'll talk about how my philosophy of leadership has evolved during the course of my career. And I'll also share how strong the connection is between chess and leadership visually. And finally, close by talking about how playing chess can help you build your leadership skills through 10 personal examples that I will share. In 1990, my father gave me one of my best gifts ever, a personal computer. During the same year, the Kasparov Karpo World Championship match inspired me to start playing chess competitively. As you can see, these two events shaped the rest of my life and career. I'm a software engineering business leader in the high tech industry. I've been in love with chess and technology for over 30 years now. And my best chess accomplishment was winning the 2018 World Amateur Chess Championship in the 1600 to 1800 category as the only unrated player amongst 80 other rated players. As I mentioned earlier, I started playing chess competitively in 1990, but quickly went on to become the number three in Mysore in 1992, in my city, Mysore in 1992. But I also gave up playing chess competitively right after that to focus on my education and career, and landed my first software engineering job in 97. In 2000, I actually got my second job, which is also in my current company, and grew into mid-managerial roles by 2004. But when I started teaching chess to my daughter when she was three years old in 2008, I was inspired to resume playing chess competitively. And starting 2010, while I had multiple leadership roles at work, I also resumed playing over the board chess in 2017 and went on to win the ACO World Chess Championship in 2018. More recently, I've been able to combine my passion of chess and technology to help a lot of chess players since the pandemic with their technology needs delve into chess photography, and you'll see a lot of pictures from my chess photography in these slides, and also experimented with biofeedback, about which I gave a talk in 2021. So overall, I have about 25 years of work experience with 20 years in managerial and leadership roles, and chess has always been an integral part of my life since 1990, for over 30 years now. Let's talk about how my philosophy of leadership has evolved during the course of my career. When I started my career, Leadership to me was getting things done through people. And this was the thinking at that point in time, and this quote by Dwight is an excellent reflection of that. Over the past 20 years, my leadership philosophy has evolved significantly, and my current thinking reflects you know, what Vision says in this, in this particular quote. I believe that everyone is a leader, and they just need to be reminded of this fact and supported through their journey. And great leaders, create other great leaders. And this picture from the West Bridge Anand Chess Academy event that happened recently is an excellent example of how a great leader like Vishy Anand can create other great leaders, you know, in this case, in the chess world. If you do a quick search for leadership in chess, you'll get 50 million records instantly. And you'll actually see excellent articles like the ones you see on this particular page. So I decided to put together a list of leadership skills and a list of chess skills and when I put these lists together and created a word cloud, you'll see a lot of words become bigger, indicating the tremendous overlap between chess and leadership visually. So chess is an excellent platform for you to build your leadership skills. And now I'll share how I was able to hone my leadership skills through chess. 
through 10 examples. The first one is dealing with losses and emotions associated with it. I'm sure many of you recognize this picture from the 2020 Olympiad, where Gukesh had just lost his game. And this was a very painful loss for him, mainly because this not only cost him his eight out of eight streak, but it also cost the match for the Indian team against Uzbekistan and possibly the Olympiad gold. But just a couple of hours later, when I met Gukesh at dinner, it was amazing to see him very, very composed. And I also um, heard from his coach, Ramesh, that he insisted that he's going to play the next game. So that was a great leadership example. And I also learned that Vishyanan had spent a couple of hours with Gukesh to help him recover through this particular um, you know, defeat by sharing his own personal examples of how he faced such situations. Vishy set another great leadership example as well. Personally, I've lost close to 50% of my chess game, so chess has time and again helped me deal with losses and emotions associated with it. And one thing that I focus on and learned the hard way is just to reflect and you know, learn from every experience irrespective of the outcome. One of my, my most painful life experiences was not getting selected for IITs, which are the most prestigious engineering institutions in India. And this was after two years of tremendous effort. But having played chess for a long time, I focused on reflecting on the learnings that I got from these two years of preparation. And I realize even today that a lot of learnings that uh, I gathered during those two years are applicable even today during my life. So one of the key leadership skills you pick up from chess is reflection to learn and become resilient. The second key leadership skill that chess teaches you is the importance of accumulating small advantages patiently. If you're familiar with cricket, and if you're a cricket fan, I'm sure you'll recognize this picture from 1998, where Brian Lara chased down a seemingly impossible target with a couple of tailenders and stunned Australia to victory. And he did this by inching towards the star target step by step, with a, you know, while also protecting the tailenders along the way. So accumulating small advantages while preventing counterplay. He minimized the exposure of the tailenders on the other side to the very strong Australian batsman. Four years prior to this, I had a very similar situation, but I didn't have Brian Lara to inspire me. But I was a chess player. So when we had a similar situation where you know, we had to score and chase down a low-scoring target in the cricket game, and all the top batsmen in my team had thrown their wickets away, I told my partner on, partners on the other side that we will go step by step towards the target while celebrating every run. So chess has taught me to value consistent progress and celebrate small victories along the way. If you want to accelerate your improvement through chess, training and coaching are very, very important. And if you are a professional chess player, you realize that this is indispensable. I was very lucky to learn the value of training and coaching very early in my life and career. So early in my career, I actually leveraged multiple mentors. I had a mentor who would teach me project management skills. I had another mentor who would teach me uh, leadership skills. I had another you know, peer who would actually coach me through my presentation skills. And I learned so much in the process, that, and I value mentoring so much, that today I actually run a mentoring program in my organization where we find mentors for aspiring leaders. And chess has also taught me to value preparation because playing competitively requires you to prepare for your game in advance. And I apply this by not only you know, ac acquiring skills that are important for my future job roles, but also simply being well prepared for the next upcoming meeting. Another important skill chess teaches you is the importance of decision making in a timely manner. As you can see in this picture, Nihal is looking at the clock. And this is something chess players do very, very often. And they almost treat time as another important asset during the game. So in chess, when you, you make each move, you actually have to make a decision out of many selections that you have ahead of you. And it, one thing chess constantly reinforces to you is that making a good decision in a timely manner is often much better than making a great decision, but with very little time left. One of my mentors took me to meet a senior leader in my company, and this senior leader gave me a list of skills that were important for you to be successful and become a leader at work. And one of the key skills he mentioned was, good is good enough. And I learned this very early, because, and, and this was very good because we are often told in our lives that you have to strive for perfection. 
and we end up realizing one way or the other that perfection is expensive and impractical. So play chess and learn the value of making good enough decisions. Another important skill that chess teaches you is the value of eliminating blunders and reducing mistakes. Because a single blunder or a big mistake can cost you an entire game full of great moves. And in order for you to eliminate blunders and reduce mistakes, you have to think what the opponent has in mind and use the opponent's thought process in your decision making. <clears throat> As a chess photographer, I've had the opportunity to observe a lot of chess players very, very closely. And one thing that I observed during the recent Anish with it match was their hands would actually hover over the pieces for a couple of seconds before they pick up the piece and again for a couple of seconds before they place the piece somewhere. The emphasis on safety was tremendous. And this is something I've learned quite a bit and apply a lot in my work as well because we deliver mission critical software and mistakes can be catastrophic. So I always value safety and quality slightly above schedule and prophylactic thinking also reinforces the importance of anticipating risks and managing them proactively. Another important skill chess teaches you is the ability to deal with wins and emotions associated with it. This picture is from the match between Anish and Vidit again, and it was amazing to see Anish celebrate emphatically after his hard-fought victory. But within a few minutes backstage, he actually came and announced that he didn't deserve as much prize money as Vidit did because it was such a hard-fought match and relinquished 40% of his prize money for a fund that was created to help another chess player, the under-14 world champion. And this is another example of uh, how great leaders create other great leaders. And I was amazed to see how grounded Anish was after this win. In my own experience, <clears throat> you know, in the 2017 ACO event, I started with three out of three, got a lot of unwanted attention because I was an unrated player in a rated category, and that definitely got into my head. And then in the next six games, I just had one victory. So I really learned the hard way the importance of staying grounded and ensuring uh, I was not complacent. Another important skill chess teaches you is you know, dealing with complexity and pressure. Nothing can be more complex than playing chess blindfolded in front of an audience of 1,000. But these two players made it look so easy, primarily focusing on playing the position and using a structured thought process. So that became my mantra for the next ACO event in 2018. And it is something that I use you know, very often both on the chessboard and off the chessboard. So valuing process over results is really critical. While results are important, it's very important to make sure you don't overemphasize on results, but really focus on the process that gets you there. And the right systems and habits will definitely help you accomplish the right results. The last three positions um, you know, actually share some very important lessons as well. And one of the key skills was <clears throat> the importance of sacrifices and exchanges. So if you see in this position, my opponent played c5. And I could have taken the pawn on c5 and reached an equal rook pawn ending. But then I decided to sacrifice the exchange and ended up winning the game. If you look at the position on the right, that's exactly what I reached. And this game is a constant reminder of the value of trade-offs. And whenever I have to make a seemingly unequal trade-off at work, I do so fearlessly by reminding myself of this position. And exchanges and draws in chess often remind me of win-win outcomes. The next position is a great example of how pieces with different powers, like the pawn, the bishop, the queens, the rooks, everything in this position at the left can help you, you know, win very, very quickly. And positions like this are constant reminders of valuing diversity and teamwork in the workplace. The final position over here um, basically was a game from an online uh, event that I played. And as soon as my opponent played b4, I played rook b6 instantly and got checkmated in a few moves. This game, you know, I actually had an eye tracker and I realized that I was not looking at the rook on h6, so I really didn't look at the whole board. And this game was a reminder of the importance of having a big picture view and envisioning the future. I'm gonna leave you with a couple of situations where I've been able to apply multiple uh, chess skills to shape my leadership approach to resolve situations. The first one is basically a delayed project, uh, is a delayed project with unhappy customers. And if you see the chess skills on the right, all of them were applicable with you know, basically my leadership approach to help my team and the project recover from this situation. The second example is of my daughters, where we had the Global Chess Festival in 2019 where my daughter had her dance ready a couple of months before the song. But being a chess player, as soon as she heard the song two months later, you know, and, and the song was very catchy and she liked it, 
she instantly decided that she's going to dance for that song and restarted her choreography. Again, given the context of women in chess, this is a great example of how when you expose uh, kids to chess at a very young age, they become very decisive and they use a lot of the skills that they learn from chess and apply it for their leadership approach. So in closing, I'd like to share that chess is an excellent platform for everyone to nurture and grow leadership skills and, and can open doors to new leadership opportunities at work and life. So three ideas, say yes to chess, whether it's playing chess, teaching chess, or you know, learning chess yourself, say yes to chess and you know, be open to the idea. Make chess in schools all pervasive and experiment with chess programs that work for leadership development. And finally, can growing your leadership skills make you a stronger chess player? I believe yes, but that's a whole other, another topic for a future uh, discussion. For now, remember the word cloud that I showed you, play chess and become a leader. And I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone on this page for offering very valuable advice and encouragement for my talk. Thank you.